This is Katherine Schmer at Chattanooga State Community College, and this is video one on projectile motion. A baseball is hit from the initial position 0, 1 meters with initial velocity vector 45, 4 meters per second. Only gravity acts on the object. Find velocity and position vectors for t greater than or equal to 0. So in this case, t is representing time, so it would only make sense for time to be greater than or equal to zero. So the way we do this problem is we treat it like an initial value problem, just like we did in the video um, when we talked about integrating vector functions. So we need some initial conditions, and this vector zero, one is telling us that position at time zero is one meter above the ground. So r of zero equals zero i plus one j, and that means that our ball is starting one meter above the ground with no x or horizontal um, position added to it at time zero. Okay, our other initial condition is initial velocity which is a vector 45i plus 4j. So that means at time zero, velocity is um, 45 in the x direction and 4 in the y direction. Now the third thing we're told is only gravity acts on the object. So gravity um, is our acceleration, so that tells us that a of t equals 0i minus 9.8 j. So any time we're dealing with meters and seconds, our gravity is 9.8 and it's pushing down, so it's going to be minus 9.8 in the y direction or j direction. So those are the, that's the information that we're given and what we want to do is integrate acceleration to get velocity. So we know that v of t equals the integral of a of t dt, and we integrate component-wise. So this is equal to the integral of 0 dt i plus the integral of negative 9.8 dt j. Now we know that integrating 0 means that we just have a constant. So this is equal to c1 i and then integrating a constant, negative 9.8, we end up attaching a t, and then we still have to add on our unknown constant. So c1i plus negative 9.8t plus c2j. Now we need to use our initial condition. So we have our velocity initial condition, v of 0 equals 45i plus 4j. So that tells us that um, C1 equals 45, and it tells us that negative 9.8 times 0 plus C2 equals 4. And from that, we know that the 0 term is gone, so we have C2 equals 4, and then we plug those back in to get our velocity function. So we have V of t equals 45i plus negative 9.8t plus 4j. Now we want our position vector. So we know that r of t equals the integral of velocity, so integral of vt dt and we do that component-wise. That equals the integral of 45 dt i plus the integral of the quantity negative 9.8 t plus 4 dt j. So for our i component, we get 45 t plus c1, and for our j component, we have negative 4.9 t squared, plus 4t plus c2. And keep in mind we get the negative 4.9 because 
when we take the integral of t, it's 1 half t squared. So basically we cut gravity in half. Now we use our position initial condition, which was r of 0 equals 0i zero plus 1j. So 45 times 0 plus c2 equals 0. That tells us that c2 is 0. And negative 4.9 times 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus c2 equals 1. So that tells us that c2 equals 1. Now we plug those constants back in to get our position vector. So we have r of t equals 45ti plus the quantity negative 4.9t squared plus 4t plus 1j. Now let's look a little further at that. We have our r of t vector function and the i component, notice that 45t is our initial velocity multiplied by time. Now let's look at the y component, or j component, and notice that the t squared term is half of gravity multiplied by time squared. The t term, 4t, is the initial velocity multiplied by time. And the plus 1 is the initial position. So that will always be the pattern that's followed when you're um, creating a position function with gravity being the only thing acting on the object. You have half of gravity t squared, initial velocity times t, and then initial position. And that will always be your j component. Okay, now let's discuss projectile motion. So sometimes all we're given is initial speed and an angle that a, a projectile is launched at. So if an object is projected from a point x naught y naught with an initial speed of v naught at an angle of alpha with the horizontal, and the only force acting on the object is gravity, use antiderivatives to find the velocity and position vectors at time t. So let's gather all of our information. Um, we're told that the only force is gravity, and gravity, we're going to call it g in this um, case, is 9.8 meters per second squared or 32 feet per second squared. So it will depend on which units you're using in your problem, whether you're using meters or feet. So this tells us that our acceleration, a of t, equals 0i minus g j. So g is standing for gravity. We're subtracting it because it's a force that's pushing downward. And it's a 0i because there's no um, hor horizontal acceleration. Okay, the next information that we want to pick out is it's launched from a point x naught y naught. So this gives me my initial position, r of 0 equals x naught i plus y naught j. And now I want to find initial velocity. So I have acceleration, I have initial position, and I'm missing initial velocity. So we have this, um, this projectile. It's launched from the point x naught y naught. It's launched up in the air with a speed of v naught and a angle of alpha with the horizontal. So it makes this parabolic path until it comes down and hits the ground. What I'm going to do is create a right triangle out of my initial speed and initial angle in order to find my initial velocity. So I have a right triangle. The hypotenuse of that right triangle is v naught, my initial speed. The angle with the horizontal is alpha and I'm going to call the horizontal component of the triangle v sub x and the vertical component v sub y. 
So we know from the first unit of the course how to break down the velocity in terms of um, vertical and horizontal components. So the horizontal component, V sub x, is going to be V naught cosine alpha, and my vertical component, V sub y, equals V naught sine alpha. This gives me an initial velocity of V of 0 equals V naught cosine alpha i plus V naught sine alpha j. So I have my horizontal and vertical components. Okay, now let's go through our antiderivatives, starting with acceleration, finding velocity, and then finding position. So we have velocity v of t equals the integral of a of t dt. Component-wise, this is equal to the integral of 0 dt i plus the integral of negative g dt j. Remember, g stands for gravity. This is equal to C1i plus the quantity negative gt plus C2j. So I just integrated. I know that my initial condition is V of 0 equals V naught cosine alpha i plus V naught sine alpha j. So the i component of initial velocity gives me my C1 and the j component of initial velocity gives me c2. So velocity, v of t, equals v naught cosine alpha i plus the quantity negative gt plus v naught sine alpha j. Just plugging everything in to my velocity function. Now I want to find position. I know that r of t equals the integral of v of t dt. And component-wise, this is the integral of v naught cosine alpha dt i. And notice that v naught cosine alpha is a constant. So when I integrate, I'm just going to be attaching a t. Plus, the integral of the quantity negative gt plus v naught sine alpha dt j. So integrating, I have that constant, v naught cosine alpha, so I have v naught cosine alpha t plus C1i. And my j component becomes negative 1 half g t squared, because integrating the t, I get t squared over 2, and it's multiplied by negative g. So negative 1 half g t squared plus v naught sine alpha t plus c2, and that's my j component. Now I have my initial position vector, r of 0 equals x naught i plus y naught j. That gives me my c1 and c2 for position. So r of t equals the quantity v naught cosine alpha t plus x naught, and that's all multiplied by i, plus the quantity negative one half g t squared plus v naught sine alpha t plus y naught, and that whole quantity multiplied by j. There's my position vector. Anytime an object is launched from initial position x naught y naught with initial speed of v naught at an angle of alpha to the horizontal and the only force acting on the object is gravity. So from now on this formula is on your formula sheet and you can actually plug in the numbers to this formula. You will not have to um, to derive the formula every time. You can actually use it now that we've derived it together.